Loops. Traction 3 has the ability to recognize various types of looped audio files and can automatically time stretch or pitch shift them to match your current tempo and key settings. These can be Apple loops, Acid loops, Rex files, or you can create your own. And Traction keeps track of them all in a single searchable loop library. Loops must be scanned and added to the library before they can be used. Switch to the settings page and choose the loop settings tab. Here we can define a folder for user loops and add extra directories to scan. If you have an existing collection of suitable loops, press add path and point traction to the relevant folder. Now press the scan for loops button and choose whether to add new loops or rescan everything. Once traction has finished, return to the edit page, open the left panel browser section and choose loops from the menu. The top section of the loops browser contains a selection of filter buttons which can be used to browse for loops by criteria such as instrument or style. Alternatively, you can type in a search keyword. Traction will then display a list of all the loops in its library that match the search criteria, and these can be previewed by selecting them if the autoplay button is turned on. Preview playback will be automatically time stretched to match the current tempo settings of the edit. When you find a suitable loop, you can drag it into the edit. The imported clip should have its little L loop symbol already turned on, so you can simply drag the clear triangle in the top right corner to repeat the loop for as long as you need. The clip can then be split and edited like any other audio clip. The loop's settings can be found in the new Loop Properties tab in the Properties panel. The top left corner of this panel contains Auto Pitch and Auto Tempo buttons. When Auto Tempo is turned on, Traction will automatically time stretch the clip to fit the current tempo settings using the root tempo and beats information that is stored with the loop to work out how much faster or slower it needs to be played. Two different types of time stretch are provided in the stretch field at the bottom. By default it is set to transient, as this is the best choice for any loop with a strong rhythmic element, including rhythm guitar parts as well as drums. Slow pad type sounds may sound better using the tonal setting, however. If auto pitch is turned off, then the time stretched audio will play at its original pitch. This is usually the best setting for drum or percussion loops, and if the loop you chose has no root note defined, auto pitch will be turned off by default. If a loop does have a root note defined, however, then auto pitch will be enabled by default, and the loop will be automatically pitch shifted to match the current edit root key. This allows you to combine loops that were recorded in different keys with a better chance that they will sound good together. Of course, if the root note is the same, that still does not guarantee the parts will fit together well, so the loops browser allows you to restrict your choice to loops with a major or minor feel, or neither. Now you can enter tempo changes or tempo ramps and all your looped parts will automatically stretch to fit. You can also specify a key change by clicking the root key field above the play button and pressing insert pitch change at cursor and all your auto pitch loops will then have their pitch shifting adjusted accordingly. If you want to create a new loop from an audio clip, the first step is to trim the clip perfectly. If it's a recording of a musician playing to a click or drum beat created with traction, then you will simply need to turn on snapping by pressing Q and slip edit the start and end points of the clip so they are on exact bar divisions.
otherwise you will need to trim it by ear. Zoom into the beginning of the loop, position the play cursor right before the first transient of the part and press I to position the in marker. Now zoom back out, position the play head at the end of the loop and press O to set the out marker. If you now press L to loop playback round the markers, you can preview the loop and adjust the out marker until it sounds right. Then select the clip and use the split clips options in the properties panel to split the clip at the markers. Delete the offcut clips and select your newly trimmed loop. You can set the current edit tempo to the loop's tempo via the auto tempo menu in the properties panel. If you don't need your loop to automatically time stretch or pitch shift, you can simply turn on the little L symbol for the clip and drag it out as far as you need. If you want to set up automatic time stretching, you need to create a trimmed version of the audio file. Select the track and press the Render Track button. If you choose to render to a specific file, you can specify a directory for the loop and a file name. Then pick a resolution for the file and make sure that only render marked region is selected. If you choose to replace the rendered track, then the trimmed clip will replace the original in the edit. Though the original long audio file you started with will not be affected and will still show in the project list if you need it again. Now switch to the Loop Properties panel and specify a time signature and the number of beats in the loop. Traction will use the number of beats in the loop together with the loop length to work out the loop's root tempo. And if you turn on Auto Tempo, the loop will time stretch itself to match any changes you make to the edit tempo. The time stretching algorithm makes intelligent guesses about how best to stretch the clip, but you may be able to improve the results by specifying beat points via the waveform display. You can specify beat points manually by dragging the green marker symbol from the top right, or you can auto-detect beat points via the beat points menu with variable sensitivity. If the loop contains pitched elements, you may also wish to define its root note and turn on auto pitch so that it pitch shifts automatically to match the root note of the edit. If you think you might want to use this loop again in future, you should now add it to your loop library. Click the Add to Library button in the bottom right of the panel. You can now specify a name for the loop and set the appropriate tags for the loops browser. Click OK when you are done. The loop will now be added to the library and should show up in the loop browser if you choose any of the tags you assigned it. If a loop has been tagged incorrectly, right click it and choose to set tags to change its settings.